report out today from the Pew Research Center shows one in five Americans are reporting no religious affiliation. That's up from percent 20 years ago. It's kind of disturbing, this business about faithless Americans. And what does it say about who they want to lead this country in the next election? Well, here now is Century Strategies President and CEO Ralph Rees, founder and chairman of the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Ralph, what, what do you make of this? One in 20, uh, no formal religious affiliation, and under 30 years old, a third have no formal uh, affiliation. What do you make of that? Well, I think there's, there's several things going on. You know, first of all, Larry, I, I don't want to di diminish the importance of a long-term uh, trend of secularization in American culture, but I also don't want to overstate it. I mean, remember that religiosity tends to track very crisply with marriage and childbearing. And 25, 30, 40 years ago, most American males got married in their mid-20s, most American females got married in their early 20s. Uh, today, those figures have both been pushed back to where young men, it's about 30. Young women, it's about 26 or 27. So my thesis is that part of what's happening here is a delayed religiosity, a, a temporarily suspended, I don't think it's permanent. Uh, I don't want to get too political about the data. But once people get married, once they start bearing children, they start attending church. And those kind of cultural conservative behaviors, Larry, are what leads them to become more uh, politically conservative. Well, I, I want to I get to the election impact in a minute. But, you know, this secularism, I, you say you don't want to downplay it. I don't think we should downplay it. I mean, secularism, I think, is not good for this country. There's too much of it. It's proclaimed too loudly in the mainstream media, if you ask me. Ralph, I can, if I don't have God each day in some way, shape, or form, I'm going to be in a heap of trouble. And I happen to worship at the Catholic Church. But whatever it is, it just seems to me that a faith-based life has got to be a more rewarding, fulfilling, and better life. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I guess what I'm saying, Larry, is I wouldn't overstate this data. For example, in this same report, 58% of the American people say that religion plays a very important role in their lives. That's only 3% lower than it was 10 years ago. If you look even at what Pew labels as the religiously unaffiliated, 68% of them say they believe in God. A number of them say they're, they're studying and looking at religion, including the Bible. And 21%, more than one out of every five, say they're praying every single day. So that's sort of like a, is this sort of like a higher power? Is that what that is? Well, for some of them it is. For some of it, what it reflects, Larry, is a loss of faith in all institutions. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Wall Street, whether it's the church, whether it's the media. And even, Larry, if you look at what is often called the emerging church or the seeker-friendly church, a lot of it is labeled in a non-denominational, open way. I personally am optimistic, and I'll tell you why. Because I still think people are spiritually hungry, I still think they're searching, and I believe that the church will find a way to connect with these folks. Well, it saved me. The spiritual life saved my life. Uh, let me just ask you now. Me too. We're going to get more political here. Um, the unaffiliated make up about a quarter of the Democratic Party base, right. according to Pew, whereas people who are faith-based make up about a third of the Republican Party, and those are mostly the white evangelicals uh, with which you have had l a lengthy association. Um, does, are those numbers shifting? Is the unaffiliated moving more? You know, are they growing larger? I mean, from 8% to 20%, they may be 30%. That's going to help the Democratic Party? Well, I'd say you know, keep in mind that the Pew study is of all adults, not voters. If you look at the trend among voters, it's actually moving in a little bit more positive direction in terms of the engagement of people of faith. In fact, if you look at the Republican Party primaries in 2012, Larry, fully 50.53% of all the voters who voted in a Republican primary or caucus for which we have an exit poll uh, said they were evangelicals. Mm. And in 2008, those voters were about 23% of the entire electorate. Uh, they voted 73% for John McCain, only 26% for Barack Obama. 
And I'm not in the prediction business, but I do think, based on the energy and the activism and the voter registration and get out the vote efforts that are out there, that they're going to be a higher percentage this time. So you think that the evangelical movement, which to some extent looked dormant, it might not have been dormant, but it didn't get a lot of press. You think it's going to be a major force? And Ralph, are they going to come out for Mitt Romney? Are they okay with Mitt Romney? Well, you know, again, looking at Pew, an earlier poll in July, I believe it was, they found that 71 percent of self-identified evangelicals said they were going to vote for Mitt Romney. That's a higher percentage of that vote than George W. Bush got in 2000. So they're coming, they're coming in big numbers. And I think the thing that's very troubling to me, Larry, is if you look at this increasing trend of secularism, particularly among self-identified liberals. Um, they, they tend not to be church. They tend not to be religiously observant. They tend to be disconnected from a lot of the heartland values and religious practices that I said the vast majority of Americans continue to testify to. And on issues like support for traditional family, for marriage, support for the state of Israel, the Democratic Party is moving away from that. Right. And, and that is troubling to me. I know. I mean, that's why, you know, this, is, um, this group that does not have an organized faith is about a quarter of the Democratic base. And the group is growing from 8% to 20%. If the group grows to 30%, it will become an even larger force in the Democratic Party. I would guess a lot of traditional Democrats will not like that and might move into the Republican Party. I'll just give you the last 20 seconds. Well, I would agree with that, and I think it's pretty extraordinary when you think about the fact that this party nominated Jimmy Carter in 1976, right. and when he was elected, Newsweek called it the year of the evangelical. It's been quite a change. All right, terrific stuff. Ralph Reed, thank you very, very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, That's Larry. That's it for this evening's show. Um, I'm not a preacher, folks. I would just tell you, the faith-based life has saved my life. That's all I will say. I'm Larry Kudlow. Thanks for watching. We will see you tomorrow evening.